Okay, so I don't know which car wash this is because it doesn't have a posted address. But it's next to the Sinclair, so it gives me some kind of reference that I can look up online. Anyway, so shampooing the mud out of the foam. Looks like the spot treatment did kind of saturate in there enough, so hopefully it extracts. It was like, uh, took like 250 for just basically the bench seat even though it's half so I gotta do half and then move the stuff and do the other half so now we'll see if it actually extracts it and I guess better check the time and date and mileage yeah, over the steering wheel Okay, I'm still learning this phone, so let's see if I get it actually pointed in the right direction. So I shampooed, did the spot treatment on that, and uh, somewhat worked for that spot. But in the base, it seems like it just forced it down more than anything else. This setup isn't that good because the vacuum is separate from the shampoo or uh, spot treatment. If they're not the same unit, then you're brushing it into the carpet or upholstery or foam and not sucking it out immediately. So the only way I can do this now is basically lightly spray it from a car wash back up and use the wet dry vac and suck it out immediately but I gotta wait because I need the driver's side use and yeah essentially it's exactly how I'll have to clean this side to get the Moisten up. Well, I can. I've already vacuumed it once. All that's basically packed in mud. So I do. I've got to basically soak it, literally almost flood it in a sense, and then extract it. Yeah, that's good to know. Because if you don't label. If you don't label that it's not a wet and dry vac, I'm definitely going to assume it's a wet and dry vac. So after I do this, I'll pull back over to the shampoo unit. Okay, so that's just without pulling the trigger on washer hose saturating it now I didn't do the back because that would be dripping down here like it is right there long term it could rust out the bottom of the metal. So now I'm going to vacuum it up. Okay, so that turned out you got the majority of the mud, the wire for my seat falling apart. On the surface he got the mud anyway. But most of the water had dissipated, like there's a small pool in this area. And that appears primarily because it's on a slope. Yeah, 
Yeah, so there's a body plug right there. Should be another one on the inside. I can't see it that far. And then there's two back here. So all the water's probably flow to the back foot compartment. So I have to do it again. Drive out of the car wash around and pull forward in the spot. And I bet all that water pulls up right in there. So I have to. So basically, at this point, I've wasted about four dollars on this machine. Okay, so back in the car wash. I'll have to double check, but I don't even think that sign has an address. Anyway, it's cash only, so put 250 in to get it soaked, and then it probably I'm estimating 250 to suck it all up. Oh, okay, so that's basically what it looks like it's already water's already disappearing so might be leaking out somewhere that I don't see so yeah I did it a lot better and it helps to have that extra moisture to suck from the bottom to the top and it's not perfectly clean but That's ideal for me. Okay, so that's complete. Oh, uh, so it costs whatever the startup cost is for the car wash. I think it's two dollars here. Not certain. I didn't really pay attention. And then another dollar plus for the wet vacuum. And I only put a dollar in it and it took care of this side. So it was like three fifty to actually shampoo this side. Yeah, see, I really can't get a view of it. Got to take it out of the hole there. No address. Yes, yeah, so I'm liking this Samsung 10 a lot better. Because apparently I can start the video either direction, the phone upside down or right side up, and it automatically will adjust it. So, the food emergency assistance doesn't cover hot food, and I'm still working on a setup to be able to just heat cans. So, right now, this is essentially the expense, the minimum daily expense, just for hot food. So and outside that, it's basically nuts. Yeah, much better a camera. I can see that clearly straight on. So anyway, I am just here at Maverick. I gotta get fuel, top off for the night and I'll have to pay attention to time from here well right after I fill it up and basically it's gonna be measured based upon time of 24 hours rather than mileage because the primarily primary house hold fuel is the fuel of the car to stay warm so cooking is different can't cook in car that would be extremely 
dangerous and extraordinary stupid. Anyway, for the expense of septic, that's about three dollars. For uh, how big is that? That's um, 16 ounces. Where is that at? 14 ounces. Now that's hard to see. So my bladder size is about 14 ounces. And the thermos of coffee it's just for example purposes yeah and the thermos is a 60 ounce so I'm getting a good deal on the refill of coffee and mine's always a coffee like a half and half coffee and cappuccino So there's the fuel receipt, and it's basically precisely at about this time, about 13.35, tomorrow I'll refuel and whatever the total gallons is, basically it would be the total expense for one day of running the car at idle all day just to be able to stay warm. Um, and when I did security at the Meeker gas plant during its um, building, its creation stage, um, I had to do this for six months. So I know the car can handle running at idle. The only side effect is, is um, it gets a lot of moisture in the exhaust system. And then you got to basically get it revved up high enough to blow it all out. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing it'd probably be about $15, um, assuming, and I gotta go take a shower, so I gotta make a short trip, but maybe on average it may only cost $10. I really don't know, I haven't paid attention to it. I'll get that figured out about this time tomorrow. And just for, I guess, uh, consideration, like, the only septic available is probably that drain port. So, if that's, well, it's basically a rain runoff. I know no toxic chemicals like oil are allowed to go down in there. But that's the closest to a sanitary dump for this location. So a porta potty would be ideal, basically right where that tree is, for the general public, or something's gotta be put in right in here to tie into it. And even when, or if that's done, the manhole clean out would have to be redesigned inside of it but if it was directly straight above the manhole it would just be a three-way T instead of a two-way to install and that would resolve after hours septic so now I am off to the local KOA to go take a shower. So this one is next to Mesa County Fairgrounds. are used in the front. I was just kind of curious. Looks like they're busy in the office, so I want to 
to see what their uh, little log cabin house setups kind of look like. And that's the kind of example, like I would assume it has to be 15 feet away from the, any structure, like the fire department told me, and the explanation for that, logically in my mind is, let's say a high wind did came up, come up and it was enough to tip it over, well you got, what, four feet of height about? It'll definitely hit the fence. Now, if it was charcoal, and even if it was enclosed with the lid on it, same concept. If it got tipped over, blown over, whatever, hit by a flying object, whatnot, you probably got a six foot travel length of debris. So you got a distance of less than six feet as extra precautionary distance. So 15 feet makes rational sense regardless what kind of fire, pit, grill, whatever it is. And I, I don't think the fire uh, department can cite what rule there, it is 15 feet. Maybe it's a policy, maybe it's a city thing, I don't know. I'm not impressed with this local department, yeah. That worked out pretty good. Now I got an open spot. So not always do you have to be like skillful, uh, covert, inconspicuous about getting information and facts. But like when I put it in my pocket, the other phone that I'm, this one replaced, the side button sometimes would contact and turn it off. So that's why I did some video tests prior in my hand to make sure it wasn't accidental or a device malfunction. And it proved to be a device malfunction. So this one has to be tested thoroughly too. and that doesn't work putting in my pocket there so I gotta readjust okay try that again and it kind of sits too high so all I'm doing is stuffing something in my pocket so it has a kind of like a child seat I guess shower okay are you having a nice day today yeah it's actually fairly warm yeah it's not too bad and at least it's not it's not snowing right yeah once you get used to the cold it's you know it takes a while to get used to it too after starts warming up too. Right, that's true. Perfect. Would you like a receipt? Yeah, please. Absolutely. Okay. 
Thank, thank you. Thank you. Have Absolutely. a good day. I'll see you back there in a little Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so obviously you can't record in the bathroom, so I gotta turn it off now. Okay, so on the inside. There's information you would see on your way out if you're paying attention. This should go without saying no recording, but I've already verified that nobody else is in here. Except for my bag and myself, obviously. So it's a fairly nice facility for $10, most definitely. So I had to go back out because I forgot. I always keep this usually on the passenger floor because this is what's basically prevented the larger health risk of getting like cracked knuckles, I got a little bit of dry skin, but pretty religiously I have to use it to keep it from cracking. And the phone doesn't really pick it up. It's a little bit chapped on the knuckles. Well, maybe a side angle or something. Might not be enough light either. But if you get cracked knuckles, especially homeless, and uh, I have wipies all the time that I use to basically wash my hands, but if you don't prevent from getting dry skin and cracking, that's gonna be one of your biggest health risks. Besides the elements of cold, and then I would say probably third on the list would be the hygiene, taking showers, brushing your teeth, so forth like that. So and another essential tool, get this brightness to work right here. Okay, it's basically a nail clipper with file and tell no uh, a nail cleaner basically so after like I don't know I think you track how many days it was it's pretty dry a lot of built up skin so that's what that hook is for is to clean the dry callus nail um, the file is not going to really do much outside of maybe smooth off the toenails. But if it doesn't have that kind of hook, that's the point of getting up underneath the toenail, keeping uh, fungus from building up. And then I have to use an actual file to shave down calluses and like the worst one on mine is always here for the balance pad so that that bone will hurt sometimes because it digs in right there so 
So that's why I have to have a file that will take care of calluses. And then just a basic body soap. So after a shower and putting the coconut butter definitely looks a lot better after scraping out all the dead skin and putting moisture back on it. And there's still nobody in here. I would have heard them come in. Um, it's the first time using the front camera on this one. But for winter time, I'm always, my underwear is always a t-shirt and thermals. Well, and obviously socks. I just say that because I see a lot of run, women running around in, uh, what do they call them, leggings? Like something that looks like uh, less than a t-shirt thick. And something happens while you're on the road or something. Uh, that's going to suck. And last thing, I even use that uh, coconut butter, Palmer's butter, whatever, it, whatever it's called. It's mostly coconut oil uh, even for my beard it works out really good keeps it oiled still and gives it a better smell Let's see if the camera will rotate while it's working wow it's impressive Samsung s10 huh so I'm back at Temporary residency. And definitely cool that this phone will record cameras at the same time. At a push of a button, that's huge improvement. Um, now there was a, uh, a guy that came in to the KOA just as I was leaving with kids, and I hadn't ever thought about uh, that scenario, having got to the part of. Uh, having a female passenger scenario yet um, but trying to keep all that stuff in mind on a temporary residency situation um, baby wipes is what I use when I had to uh, take control of the situation with my ex-wife um, and leave for I think it was like 30, maybe it was 45 days. I don't remember how long it was because of her caretaking neglect. Uh, and her delusional mind, she's always claimed that as being kidnapping. It's not kidnapping. Um, it's basically protecting your ass because if it becomes a legal matter, you'll be a co-conspirator with her. So... She's got her own delusional story. That protection order was denied. She keeps repeating that story to the court. And of course, the court doesn't verify anything and just goes with the flow. Now get to the unregistered protection order um, probably tonight. So local PD better understands how the sheriff's department got caught up in the court clerk's circuitory fraud and how this kidnapping going on to uh, four years has gotten out of control and gone this long is totally within the control of the court clerks who keep aiding her kidnapping, uh, pretty much promoting it and training her at it at the same time. But I'm back here, so I just wanted to look real quick switch the camera at how this bark is doing driving on it and it did blend in a little bit just rolling over it that's pretty much kind of mud getting on it so kind of like self blending it it's not the most efficient way to do it, but 
It resolves a temporary problem that I have a clean spot to walk on, keep it out of the car, and work on. Now, it'd probably take, at the looks of it, this was more stable ground with grass on it. I gotta get that wire screen out of there. Um, and it's starting to dry up. It looks like at just barely above freezing temperature, it takes about two days for the water to soak in all the way, drain. So, I don't know, in reality, the thickness of it, it would probably take like three, maybe four blendings to get this big a wood chip to blend in with the soil. And probably overall it'd be cheaper than rock, but I don't know, it's just, I'm just worried about, uh, I'm just concentrating on a two park, two parking spot section. So now I gotta go get tobacco. And this is kind of just like another heads up for, ah, for general public that doesn't, isn't aware of it. Make sure traffic is clear here. But, like when 18-wheelers got stickers on their vehicles saying they're not liable for rocks, chips, and shit like that. And it's very untrue. And they come out of a, a commercial lot. It falls on that property, even though this is raw land and they're not required to have insurance and neither am I. The liability is on the driver and could fall on the property because like this should have a heavy rock aggregate so there's some kind of clean out area but that's specific to this lot so that's pretty good distance I don't know what across the street and about the same length down and that only gets the mud off of the surface and barely some out of the sides. I have to get to probably 10, 15 miles an hour to start kicking it off the sides and like 35 to clear it completely. That's where it'll start painting the side of the car and my mirror and sometimes on the windshield. So that's why I know I need some kind of flaring to stop that. I mean, especially I don't want it on my windshield because uh, it'll scratch the window pretty good trying to wash it off with wipers and fluid. Speaking of which, I gotta put fluid in. So before I go to get tobacco, and I basically run this stretch down to City Market and usually that's enough to clear my tires of the mud. The snowfall was heavy enough that it looks like it knocked down some of the weeds, at least next to the road, so it saves me some trouble. I'll still have to back over it and knock it down more, but I just wanted to check how good this phone is on its zoom. That's a times 10 from the street. So that should be times 10 zoom should be the mini minimum that the city puts on top or that least that light post there unfortunately with the way that they designed it at the intersection there's one there one there but there's not actually one for the street until right here so it's not too bad design for the lighting 
but that one would be ideal to at least overlook this quarter lot. This one here probably could overlook the back further lot. That one there can easy, easily overlook that lot over there. And maybe it'd be best that that one overlooks this lot here. The only reason I'm getting in some of this detail is because PD is supposed to be watching these videos. They do have the playlist link. Okay, so I got the city market, and I'll get my fluid here, wiper fluid here real quick. But just coming out here, that much mud hit my side of the windshield. So it definitely needs about that, that much length of the road to clear out the mud. Back at the parking spot. Got my got my tobacco. I still got got to go in tomorrow and do other shopping. And let me see. Yeah, hey, I gotta turn my running lights on. That'll help better. And I'm talking at different tones because I'm still testing out this phone too anyway the guy I don't remember his name off the top of my hand and I usually don't if you don't have a name tag on but he asked a good question he said he's seen my car over here and was wondering what was going on and thought it might be like an RC recreation track or something like that. And no, just normal driving. My car's in an all-wheel, all-time, all-wheel, four-wheel drive. So it does crawl like a Jeep, basically, in this kind of mud. I don't have to... It spins out just a little bit, but the... Tires are beefy enough that it grips pretty quickly. But yeah, I could definitely see how one would think it's like RC recreational driving or whatnot. And yeah, just normal driving. It's a mess. That's why typically I'll come in only here and I'll exit on that side over there so it doesn't cause problems for this lot over here with the exception of going out this way after a snowstorm because it will promote, the mud will promote the safety of this one side melting quicker until they get a salt truck or something like that. That's why whoever moved the bike rack, you know, it's it's not a walking way yet. It looks like there's been some attempts to put some safety measurements into place, but that's the reason why it closes that off because a child would be ignorant that that's one-way traffic. But the community is responding a little bit better noticing the exit sign on that side so they at least start slowing down for merging traffic it could be done better but that's the best it's going to get right now and for the perk test how fast the water is absorbed by the soil basically it's going to be monitored by this spot right here for the most part nobody drives in it and I won't even play in that. And that'll let me know how fast the soil drains. And that's the point of the wood chips is a little bit more cost effective 
solution to work into the land and it's organic so it'll promote the grass growth better and it doesn't have any uh, byproduct of weeds or anything like that or trees or, or other other things besides trees but no it's it's not an uh, official recreation land by any means but mixed property yeah it could be that but that's more up to the county assessors that the clerks have failed to identify the full information of how to contact the owner of this property that's why in addition to the legal eviction it has to go through the court because the court needs to get on to its clerks and notaries that are supposed to be registered with the Secretary of State to do their jobs properly. Okay, so that guy that came walking up, I have to zoom in here. See if this phone will actually focus automatically. But anyway, I can tell it's Sheriff. And he said that that they were told uh, he was told he had to leave. His wife is over there somewhere in that field too. But in five days, he's got temporary residency. He didn't say he'd been there five days. He's like between places. So as long as there's two lots available, it could be interpreted the law that you can tell them to move to the other lot. But really, it's just making sure under sex offender law that they're registered with that location as being where they sleep or stay. So as long as they're not sex offenders or if they are, well, if they are, they have to be registered. But if not, then... Pretty much if they're not wanted then all you can do is end up pushing them to another lot and you can only do it one time before it's harassment so I can't tell the general public anything outside that besides the facts I know and I can cite the law again put it down on the bottom of the description of the YouTube video oh and that was the other thing the guy did say that uh, Allegedly, he heard that the city had passed some kind of law uh, regarding people couldn't stay on the street curbs or something like that. Um, I don't know, that gets touchy. Uh, commercial property is the only thing that's not listed as a trespassing party. Raw land makes that more obvious. But if city is putting laws into place that conflict with state laws, then that would invalidate the local law automatically. They can't supersede the state law. And any new laws is supposed to go in front of the attorney general for review first anyway. Um, that's under the same statutory law of the court clerks and notaries Title 1-40-111.